Hi everybody, here is Fabio and we just had another uh, Battle for Azeroth live development Q&A Q &A, sorry. and uh, I want to just share with you my thoughts uh, on a couple of points that came up from uh, this interview to see what you think uh, if, if you agree or if you have a different take on, on a couple of points that uh, will matter in Battle for Azeroth so, um, it's not going to be a full coverage of your interview, but I'm going to focus on, on, on these couple of points. So let's get to the point. The first one is, I'm going to read you the, the question because it's quite straightforward. Can we get a proper explanation on why you keep going with the GCD changes despite the absolute majority of the player base being against it? So. <laughs> N nice question, you know. <laughs> it's clear what the the player was thinking about the GCD change. As you know, first of all, the GCD change means that a lot of classes um, have some abilities that prior were not associated with the GCD, a global cooldown. Now they have a global cooldown associated to it, and uh, most of the player really hate this change. Uh, in the forums, the feedback has been absolutely negative. Uh, and Ian gave um, quite a long answer uh, about this question. I spent a lot of time talking about it. Um, so, making it, making it short, uh, the reasons are they want to smooth out the, the spike of damage that a player can do in PvP, where you, you pop all your CD and you blow up somebody. <laughs> Um, because that's not fun and when you're not having your CD up you're just trying to stall the game waiting for your CD to come back up so they don't like that playstyle and this change actually should help avoiding with these um, damage spikes that you can have in a, in a PvP environment. Another part of the answer was regarding giving the player more time to react to the decisions because if an ability is tied to a GCD, you have the time while the GCD is going on to do to move or to do whatever you want before you pop your second uh, cooldown, for example. I, I don't see this to make a lot of sense to me. I don't know if you guys can explain this to me. It, it doesn't make any sense. Uh, the, the other reason is that they want to reduce the multiplicative effect that the damage ability have. So obviously if you pop all your CD all together they have a multiplicative effect, they stack on each other and that's the way to go. For any DPS spec that's always the case, you want to stack up all your CD obviously. Um, to a point that sometimes it feels that what you're doing outside your CD window doesn't matter that much for your overall throughput. On the other hand, if you get um, to move even just for a second in your CBD, uh, sorry, in your burst window, in your CD window, uh, that screws you up a lot. <laughs> it screws you up all the performance that you might possibly have in that boss, in that encounter. And I understand more this answer. Actually, when I DPS, I don't like this playstyle where uh, actually, when I, uh, I am in this window, I absolutely have to make sure that I don't have to move, absolutely, and I maximize my DPS in that window, and for the rest of the time, it doesn't really matter that much. I, I don't like that aspect of, uh, of, of a DPS, but that might be just, just me. In general, I'm, I must say that as a healer, I don't feel I'm affected that much by this change because we had already really few abilities that were out of a GCD. So having those into the GCD will not make or break our playstyle, it will not change much, I think, and uh, it, it will be just a little bit easier to manage those ability having a GCD associated to it. So uh, I don't feel bad, I don't think it's gonna ruin anything in, in the fun of being a healer. But I totally see what uh, the big impact that this change will have on uh, some DPS classes. Um, and they specifically mentioned the warrior, for example, the fury warrior, 
where uh, they are <laughs> basically constantly pressing um, CD and never doing any damage because they are always on this GCD. So what they are doing is they are trying to um, focus on those specific specs that have this kind of problem. They are looking for feedback and they will address those specific issues. So I, I cannot speak for a main spec DPS. As a healer, I think that we should remain calm <laughs> and I don't, I don't think that uh, any fun will run away from us because of this. The only advice that I feel is to give you is try to keep it uh, um, constructive. Any feedback that we give to Blizzard is more effective when it is constructive, when it is specific uh, regarding um, a, sp a special issue that uh, affects this change. I mean, do not just say this sucks, the overall change sucks, because this is this doesn't give them any any information. Let's try to be to give reasons why this change is not good if we think it's not good. I personally think that there is another reason that uh, Ian obviously don't want to say to everybody, and uh, another reason for which they are doing these changes that they want to lower the scale cap of World of Warcraft as a game. And I can see why. I mean, if you think about it, if you see two players with the same item level, but one is an amazing player, a top-end player, and the other one is a mediocre player, there might be three times a throughput difference between those two players. I mean, it's normal, it's normal to see three times more. It's unbelievable what an amazing player can do compared to a, an average or a below average player. So, I think that it makes sense from a Blizzard perspective. Let's try to mm, do the things that will keep this difference in place, but we don't want a three times difference between a top end player and an average player because uh, otherwise it's gonna be difficult you know to uh, size a boss encounter for both players because maybe the average player will get to that point a couple of months or three or four months later than a top end but uh, still it should be nice that uh, most of the players should be able to experience the contact and I mean that honestly makes sense from a, um, a Blizzard perspective and remember that even if this change will lower a little bit the skill cap especially for the DPS spec there's gonna be always in any case a very high skill cap in this game uh, World of Warcraft is not gonna become easy because of some ability go into the GCD there's always going to be a big difference between a very good player and an um, average player. The second important question was regarding the uh, traits that we are going to find in the Azurite armor. I'm quite concerned about this point also, so I want to mention it to you guys. Um, well, what Ian said was that in the gear that matter, I mean not the leveling gear, but in the uh, riding gear of a uh, Azurite armor, uh, there are gonna be traits that will impact somehow our uh, playstyle or our even our DPS priority or stuff like that because they are gonna buff a specific spell or adding procs that you have to react to. This is what he mentioned actually. So they, they shouldn't be dull, they shouldn't be just uh, uh, more visibility, more crit or something like that. There should be something in those traits that uh, will make our um, priority change. Uh, actually, I'm quite concerned why. Let, let's pause for a moment and see what they are supposed to replace. We're supposed to replace our artifact weapon with all of the traits that we had in those artifact weapon, uh, the relics that we had in the artifact weapon, uh, the N netherlite crucible, the legendaries, the tier set, you know, I mean, 
five different things all in the azurite armor and i don't think that the current azurite armor has the potential to replace all of these things it's a lot it's a lot and it's absolutely impossible they might barely replace the netheral like crucible or the set bones but they're not gonna replace all the rest so uh, our spec will be with less, less stuff in it, at least at launch. But I hope, I hope, and I'm not sure, but I hope that Blizzard has in mind additional things to empower us or to give us additional procs during Battle for Azeroth. Maybe even not at launch, but in future, in future patches. If you think about it, the Netherite Crucible was not with us at launch. Uh, most of the legendaries were with us months later, etc, etc. So, um, it makes sense if they have plans to give us more power and especially to give us more procs, more tool to enrich our spec. To not start at launch with the full bloom potential, full bloom um, procs, etc, but with the um, pruned version. But if that's, that's all, I mean, if throughout uh, the whole Battle for Azeroth we don't get any other proc, any other ability uh, to choose, um, this is not gonna um, be the same of what we had in Legion. This is gonna be less, 100%. I mean, it's too many things that we have to replace and there's no chance that the current uh, Azeroth armor can do that. Another thing that concerned me quite a bit is that in the following question, Ian um, explained how the uh, respec is gonna work for the Azerite armor. And uh, what he said is that it's gonna work like the original talent respec that we had in the, um, I think from vanilla to uh, kata, to cataclysm, I think. I'm not sure, but I think that's the case. Where you went to a special person and you paid some gold to have the possibility to respect your talent and the more times you do that and the higher the cost is gonna be. So the idea behind it is that you can absolutely respect your Azurite armor but you, you, you have to do it if you've specced by mistake at the, <laughs> at the beginning. You cannot respect every time you're switching from a healer spec to a DPS spec. That's not gonna be possible not only for the inconvenience of going to a specific NPC to um, having the possibility to respect, but also because the cost is gonna be prohibitive. What he said is that if you're planning on respecting 10 times a week, the cost is gonna be absolutely prohibitive. So this is quite, <laughs> it has been quite a bad news for me because this means that you're gonna keep your uh, items more or less in a, uh, a specific with the specific traits so you're gonna have uh, uh, three pieces of a, of the azurite armor for every spec that you're planning on using so let's uh, let's make an example i want to play uh, resto shaman and i want to be able to play um, elemental shaman in raid sometimes when uh, when it's required so i need to have three pieces for the, my resto shaman and i have to have three pieces for the elemental spec but the azurite armor has specific traits associated to it and for certain counter i might need that piece because it empowers um, chainail and chainail might be very good in specific fights um, so i need that three pieces of azurite armor that are empowering chainail but for the other fights, I might need to do some spot healing and I'm gonna end up taking Echo the Element and I'm gonna use a lot of Riptide. So I want to have in my bag also other free um, pieces that are empowering not Chain Hill but Riptide. And then I have my Elemental <laughs> pieces and they have free pieces for AoE fights and they have free pieces for single target fight. So all of a sudden I have 3 times 4, that's 12 pieces just for the Azurite armor to use only 2 specs, we're talking about only 2 specs. And then I have the weapon, 
Now I have also to have the weapon for uh, my restaurant spec and my uh, elemental spec. And then I have the trinkets. <laughs> and I have also some extra ring and some extra necks to, to switch around the secondary stats when it's required. You see, it's, it's quite bad. <laughs> it's quite bad. So I really don't like it, not just for the space that all of these things are gonna take in the bag, but I don't like it for how many pieces I have to farm for all these different uh, scenarios. It is true that uh, once upon a time, I don't remember when it changed, but uh, I believe up to Mr. Pandaria, we had the gear with the primary spec uh, stat associated to it. So you had to have basically all of your gear um, dedicated for uh, your strength and your intellect or your agility, you know, because it didn't swap the primary stat automatically. So we are going back in this expansion and this is not gonna be nice at the beginning of expansion. Uh, it's not gonna be worse than Legion because in Legion, at a certain point, the biggest problem was having the right um, legendary for your ops back. Normally, you, at the start of Legion, after a couple of months, you, you didn't have your right legendaries for your ops back. So it's not gonna be as bad as the start of Legion, but it's not gonna be nice. It's not gonna be easy to farm all these pieces to play the ops back. Uh, uh, so I hope that during Battle for Azeroth this will be made uh, easier and it, it should be easier to respect the gear in my opinion because it's it's so... <laughs> and it is tedious, it's not fun. So guys, these were the points that I wanted to cover and to share my thoughts with you. I am really curious to see uh, if you have any comment on this uh, because uh, um, because I'm, I'm quite interested in knowing your opinion. Uh, the rest of the interview uh, was covering PvP aspect, uh, world PvP, uh, the racial and the effect of the racial in uh, PvP. So uh, I'm <laughs> I, I must admit that I'm not a great PvPer uh, and I don't want to say things that uh, don't make sense so I will leave this for other streamers. So thanks for, watch, for watching guys, I hope you enjoyed and I will see you in the next video. Ciao!